Creating a rich red tone on your painted miniatures is tough, but I'm gonna show you how without using white, black, or making it look pink. Craig here on the third floor. Let's go to our next step in painting the Domador Kitty Caveras by Weird Miniatures. We're gonna focus on red cloth, and I'm gonna show some of the secrets that I use to paint red that don't allow you to highlight it without making it look pink and allow you to shade it without using black. Towards the end of the tutorial, I'll also show you how to do a freehand detail on the very edge of the dress, a nice yellow, uh, a nice yellow line, and give you some tips on how to make drawing freehand a little bit easier. All right, let's jump in. All right, so this is the really most important feature on this model. Um, it's going to be painting red on that dress. Uh, what's tricky about red? is that if you highlight it incorrectly, what you end up doing is you make things look pink, um, which really isn't how red is highlighted. The other thing that can be difficult is getting the shading right. Uh, a lot of times if you use black, um, it can be wrong. So we're gonna start off by base coating it in Tara's Red by Scale Color. The idea here is, is that I just wanna get um, kind of a nice red tone. I'm gonna thin it down uh, we're going to be using some flow improver. You'll notice that when I paint, we're also using the finisher brush from Gadzooks Gaming. You'll notice that uh, I tend to thin my paints as I go. Uh, so I'm using a wet palette and I have my paint on one side and my uh, flow improver on the other. And I control how thin my paints are as I paint. So we'll take a little bit of the flow improver, add in a little bit of the red and we're just going to base coat the entire dress. And then as we paint, really, we're gonna paint over the majority of this base coat, um, but this is just going to kind of set the overall tonality of that red. So as you can see, it's pretty thin and the darkness and lights that I uh, already have in place because of how I primed the model with the Zenithal uh, priming, is gonna really show through. And I'm not too concerned with the fact that uh, this red is so thin, because like I said, we're just kind of laying the base coat down and as we paint, it's going to um, cover the majority of what I'm base coating right now. Okay, so we've got everything base coated here. Uh, what I don't have coated yet is the underside of the dress. Um, I'm gonna do that with a little bit of a darker color, uh, darker tonal red. But uh, here, I'm, you know, as I'm painting, I check to make sure that everything that I wanted painted is painted. Now we're gonna go with a blood red from uh, Scale Color. It's a slightly darker red and we're gonna use that to base coat the underside of the dress. Again, add a little bit of flow improver. And thin as we go. Again, I'm gonna be doing this in several coats, so I'm not too concerned about uh, how, you know, full coverage here. That's basically just to get rid of the gray and to set a slightly different tone from the parts of the dress that are getting hit by light. So there we go. We're getting most of those undersides done. And here I have to fight with myself a little bit because the completist in me really wants to paint everything that's gray on the underside of that dress, but you'll notice that you really don't have to because there's parts that will never be seen um, from any angle except turning the... Uh, model upside down, which uh, will not be happening very often. Okay. So now we're going to go for an even darker tonal red. This is the deep red from scale 75. And 
We're going to use the Artis Opus double zero uh, brush for this. Now I'm going to start kind of shading in uh, under the breasts here because this part of the dress really is not going to get much light. So I want to set that off tonally. This is really still a base coat because we're going to be doing a lot more detail work on that underside. It's going to get darker in places and a little bit lighter in other places. But here I'm just setting the tonal differences between the lighter tonal uh, base coat and this is going to be a darker base coat. So now comes the big secret. We're going to take Black Forest Green, which if you look at the color wheel, is the exact opposite on the color wheel from the red. When you take two colors that have similar tones, you'll notice this green has a similar tone to that deep red. When you combine opposites on the color wheel, you get a very rich, dark color. So it's not quite black. You'll notice it's a, a dark color, but not quite black. It's got a richer feeling. And now I'm just kind of mixing with the deep red to create a, uh, a gradation. So now on my wet palette, I've got all the way from a real dark color here, all the way up back to that deep red. And now we're gonna hit places where really little or no light is hitting. So under the breasts. Here I'm still just kind of sketching in uh, these dark areas. I'm not too worried about the transitions between uh, the dark areas and the lighter areas. We're going to hit those as we go. You'll notice here now I'm going to go hit the deep red and kind of work that transition a little bit between the uh, where the breast starts to get light and that darker area. And because I'm doing it as a glaze, I'm thinning it down, we get a nice transition. We go back dark again. And now I'm just working back and forth um, along that uh, spectrum from the dark, rich red that I got from mixing in the green back up to the deep red. I'm looking as I go. We're going to bring in some highlights here. Because all my paints are live on the palette, I can switch between them. Keeping them thin which allows me to have some smoother transitions. Now you see I'm working back down off the top of the breast. Got a little bit on the hand there and I just wipe it off. Another thing that's nice about thinning your paints is when you make a mistake, you just need to run your finger on the mistake and it usually comes right off for you. All right, so now we're gonna start going in and creating some contrast here on the dress. So I'm using my dark color, my darkened red, which is a mixture of the red and the green. And we're gonna to start defining these creases in the dress. And uh, I don't need this to be super neat. Uh, right now I'm kind of just sketching it in a little bit. I'll, be wor I'll worry about the transitions and how smooth things are later. Right now I just wanna define these darker areas and you'll notice as I go I'm mixing as I go so sometimes I go a little bit darker sometimes a little bit lighter and I've got that whole spectrum right there on my palette and we're just hitting those creases this is going to start to give life to this red dress because ultimately it's going to look good if there's contrast So we've got a good bit of it to find. Uh, work on the under the uh, the under part of the dress and the abdomen area a little bit more. You'll see me spinning the miniature and looking at it between strokes. This allows me to take a step back and get a feel for what needs pigment. Look at the underside of this dress a little bit darker here, kind of define again where the light's hitting or not hitting. And again, you'll notice I'm not being ultra precise because as I go in and I start highlighting again and working back and forth, we're gonna get things a little bit neater. Um, now the upper part of the dress that's being held by her hand, same process. 
defining those creases with that darker, deep red. You see me going back to areas over and over again. As pigment dries, I take a look at uh, the underside of the abdomen there and realize that it needs a little bit of either highlights or shading. Or I might see a transition that's a little too uh, harsh for me and I can just work it a little bit. So now we're doing some cleaning up here. So I'm going back to the Antares Red again. I'm adding another layer. So you'll notice that the base coated red that was, uh, you know, showed a lot of the white through it. I'm now going back and putting that uh, original base color Antares Red back in there. This is doing a couple things for me. One, it's making that uh, second coat that it really needed to uh, bust through and not show the underlying primer, but it's also allowing me to kind of clean up the edges from the shading. Again, because it's a glaze, you can see that we're getting things nice and cleaned up. Very easy to see the places that I've hit because they've got kind of a deeper red. Let me just work it out. The other thing to notice too is that I'm starting from the top and my strokes are down and that's because I want more of the pigment at the end of the dress because there's going to be more light hitting there. I want that to be a richer red. You see me working the transition between the creases, that dark red in the crease, and the base coat. And because the glaze that I'm using is thin to the point where it's semi-translucent, uh, it creates some nice transitions. I'm just constantly mixing as I go, adding more flow improver where I want some, you know, things to be more translucent. Here I'm going to start working the transitions a little bit more between the dark shaded areas. By adding a little bit more of that red create a nice transition. Okay, things are cleaned up nicely. Now I'm going up to the uh, top part of the dress there, which is going to obviously get a little bit more attention because of where it is. And we're cleaning things up. see kind of that sloppiness of the shading that I did is uh, slowly disappearing as I add more and more glazes and you know glazing takes time um, it's much faster to just use pure pigment um, we're gonna go here up to a that Antares red I'm adding a little bit more um, used up a lot of it and it got a little too thin but uh, you know glazing takes time um, I find it well worth it it um, allows you to not lose any detail on the miniature because your paints are so thin it allows you to really create transitions on the fly and the key with glazing is you know you lay down your paints and then let it dry look at it and decide if you need more layers the other thing you'll notice is as I add more layers I will be covering less and less area so that way the 
parts that I'm either shading or highlighting are getting more pigment and creating those transitions for me. All right, we are almost done with kind of the cleanup phase, reapplying that base coat. And uh, it's already starting to really have that look that I want. Um, we need to uh, kind of clean up the breast area here a little bit, bring that base coat back up again. Trying to do, get everything done from a base coat to shading perspective so that I can focus on highlights. Here I'm using the darker color to create a little bit more contrast and also take care of what I saw was a kind of a harsh transition. All right, let's start working on some highlights. This is the Aldebaran uh, Red. It's uh, kind of an orangish red, tonally higher than uh, the reds we've been using so far. Not a huge step, but a, but a step nonetheless. Now, uh, let's we're gonna use the triple zero. Uh, now, transitioning over to a smaller brush. Again, mixing live. And now I'm gonna start building up my highlights. And because I'm thinning it, even though this is a very orangish red, it's what it's just going to do is bring up the tone without making it orange. So I'm focusing on where light's hitting and just bringing it up. And because again, I've thinned it down and I'm doing it as a glaze, my transitions are going to be really take care of themselves here. Strokes are very thin. You see, see how orange that paint is on the thumb there versus the other ones. But again, because I'm doing it as a glaze, my highlights still look like a highlight of red. It doesn't look like I'm just painting orange on red. You notice I'm not painting the entire area of the folds. Focusing more on the ends and where I want the light to be hitting. This is not my final highlight. But I do want to differentiate some areas. This upper part of the dress it's obviously going to get more light than the rest of the dress, so it's going to get more of this highlight color. Now we're going to brighten up the areas of the bosom here that's getting more light. Again, I'm constantly spinning and looking, figuring out what needs paint. Okay, so the way you make orange is you mix yellow and red. So now what I'm gonna start doing to get my final highlights is I'm gonna slowly start adding yellows to the red. And you have to be careful. Um, you don't want it to look orange and you don't want it to look yellow, um, but adding the yellow will tonally bring up the paint without making it pink. If you just add white to red, it becomes pink. Here we get kind of a richer orange color. And again, because of the glazing, look how thin that was on my thumb. Because of the glazing, the red still sh shines through and it just kind of brings up the tone for these final highlights. really see how 
I'm not losing the red color, even though I'm applying a very light orange. The other thing about glazing is you have to give it time to dry. It's going to be brighter when it's applied because of the shininess of it while it's still wet. And then after it dries, it darkens a little bit. Um, that's why you have to do multiple layers. So now that that's dried, I'm going back over, applying a little bit more, making sure I end my brush stroke where I want most of the pigment, pigment to show up. There, you can really see that nice transition we've built up. Okay, we'll hit the top of the bosom here, because again, that's going to get as much light as any part of the dresses. We want it to contrast with the abdomen and underside of the breast. And now we're just going to go in and work the rest of the folds on the main part of the dress. Even after all of those coats of paint, I can still see where my Zenithal uh, highlights were and the base coat when I did the priming. And this helps kind of guide me where the areas that I need to bring up and bring down. So even though we've applied several layers of paint, because they were glazes, we can still see through it. All right, kind of speeding up here. Um, I've hit most of the dress now with that highlight. So painting this so far has taken several coats. I've used several different reds. I've used, you know, some dark greens to darken it. And I'm using, you know, these yellows to brighten it up. And uh, it's really starting. All my transitions are now nice and gradual. And it's really creating a rich red color. Not pink, not orange, not a muddy brown. It all just looks red. You can also see why I wasn't too worried about, you know, sketching in those dark areas and being a little sloppy. Because as we've gone through and reapplied the base coats and put in the highlights, has created those transitions and really cleaned things up nicely. I really need the ends of this part of the dress to be nice and kind of bright. A much uh, lighter tone highlight than I'm going to see elsewhere on the dress because of where it is and where I want the eye to focus. If you get the contrast right on your miniature, um, the brighter, to lighter tonal areas are going to get the most attention from the from the person's eye when they're looking at it. Uh, but that only works if you've got dark areas. It's funny. Uh, as you highlight up, your darker areas become darker. Um, as you darken areas, your highlights become brighter. That's just the way our eyes work. So sometimes to you know increase the highlights, you darken the shading. Sometimes you know the best way to add some darkness to your miniature is to bring up the highlights. All right, at this phase, all I'm doing is 
looking at the miniature, finding where I want places to be lighter, finding transitions I'm not happy with, and working my paints in, adding glazes till I get them to the point where I'm happy. I'm really not making my final assessment until I see the areas have dried. there Again, you see me kind of spinning the miniature and deciding what needs a little bit of either brightening or darkening or a transition that needs to be a little bit smoother. And because all my paints are still live on the palette, I'm able to go in and get the tone I need and apply the glaze to uh, accomplish what I'm hoping to do. Each time I glaze on a new highlight, the paint area is a little bit smaller. The brush stroke finishes where I want most of the pigment to be. Um, I think of it as pushing the pigment. I mean, this is probably the seventh or eighth time I've hit the ends of this part of the uh, upper, you know, upper dress. Um, but that's because, you know, again, I want that uh, tonally to be much brighter um, than any other part of the dress. Okay, Oops. we're going to add a little bit more shading here to define that fold. Kind of bled into each other a little bit, so we're going to bring some darks in, which of course makes the highlights brighter. And I'll go back and clean it up as needed. And let's get some darker areas here at the bottom. So we're going to go back to mixing with our green to make the underside of that dress tonally a lot different than the upper sides that are getting the light. Okay, so let's do a little bit of freehand. Let's create um, the detail on the uh, dress. So we're gonna use Averlin Sunset, a base coat from Citadel. And I'm gonna use the edge of the dress as a guide because this line should have be the same distance throughout the whole area between the end of the dress and the line. So here I'm establishing what that distance will be. And now I'm running the line parallel to the end of the dress. And that's gonna tell me how this line's going to wrap around all of these folds. I'm just constantly using the edge of the dress, the end of the dress, I should say, as my guide and just running a yellow line parallel to it. spend the most time with kind of that first fold because that's going to be really my benchmark for the rest of the dress. It's, I want the yellow line to be the same distance 
on all of these folds from the end of the dress. While you're doing freehand, if you make a mistake, you can go back with the colors that you used for the dress to clean it up. Here I was uh, didn't have to do that. I was able to keep that line the thickness I wanted it to, but had I lost control of the paints and you know got the line in the wrong place or it was thicker than I wanted it to, I could go back with my reds and oranges that I used to create the dress and you essentially erase the yellow line by adding those pigments back. Now I'm just going along the entire edge of the dress, again, running it parallel to the end of the dress. So this looks like an accent detail. Now the other thing that's interesting too is this is a pure yellow. Um, and obviously, you know, we used some yellow to highlight this red, but because we're applying a pure yellow for a detail, it makes those orange and yellowish areas that we use to tonally highlight the dress look more red. Because suddenly it's not as yellow because we have a yellow to compare it to. It's funny how little details um, kind of trick the eye. The reason I went yellow on this detail is because it makes my dress look redder. done with base coating the detail. We're going to go back and highlight it just a little bit here in a second. Just need to get these top areas outlined. Now we're going to highlight this with Flash Gets Yellow. Uh, it's a higher yellow than the uh, Averland. And we're just basically going to put little dots of brighter yellow um, on this detail um, where, you know, the light's hitting. And that's going to ultimately make the Averland look darker. And just get a little bit of a depth to this detail. So you see I'm not going to repaint the whole thing, I'm just hitting the upper areas, I'm just creating little spots of highlights.
It's going to give a little bit of depth to the detail. And we'll also trick the eye into making the uh, upper parts of the reds look a little bit brighter too. Because we're using this detail to uh, make it clear to the eye uh, where the highlights are. All right, let's just get the upper part here. Just tiny little dots. looking over the whole thing um, the top of those breasts aren't quite as bright as I want them to be so I'm gonna go back here and create a very thin yellowish orange to just kind of do the final highlights at the very end of the breast there so tonally it looks a lot different and then that'll complete it so hopefully that helps you um, play around with it. Uh, this should help you create uh, some nice, rich reds. I appreciate everybody taking the time. Take care.